Alright guys, welcome back. As you last saw, we met this girl. Don't know who she is, but she is in the top of a castle. That's all we know. Amazing woman. We're going to see who she is. And hopefully she doesn't try to kill me. Uh, get out of here, Chaos. Very good guy, by the way. But Okay, look here. Alright, look. This is what we'll do. Boom. Bet. How you feel about that? Alright. Bet, guys. Let's get this over with. So... As we last said, she asked me, who, who are you? She asked, you tell her your name and that you are here to smite evil while making your fortunes. Okay, why does, it, like, I just want to be a hero. This brings a smile to her face. A pretty smile. You respect, although it's hard to tell under all the dirt smudge on her face. She gives her name as Saiba. Saiba? Uh, if anyone wants to correct me with that, the best you can in the comment section is you go ahead and knock yourself out. It says there is a key to her chain on the table. Sure enough, beside beside cracked and dusty chain is a small brass key. China? Dusty China. Beside cracked and dusty China is a small brass key. Okay, if anyone could tell me what that is, please explain. As you set aside unlocking her, she tells you that she is a merchant daughter who was traveling with her father's trade caravan when it was attacked by a mighty ogre with a small band of priests of an evil god wearing dark cloaks. Those of her party not killed in the initial attack were taken prisoners and chained up in this room. One by one, they were taken away by the prisoners never to return. They were probably eaten. I do, I do know ogres like their uh, fresh human meek. They took my father... Kaba sniffs. No doubt he is slain, but I must try to find him. Will you help me? You asked her if she has any idea where her father or the others might be, but she knows little of the rest of the castle. Takes you aside and says, Ought we take her to safety, then look for her father on our own? She will be in danger trying with her. You agree that having some half-starved, unarmed merchant daughter tripping along says you will only get her killed. But where is safety? Last time you checked, the courtyard was crawling with goblins. And according to her, the castle residents are not very good hosts. What do you do? Chain her back up for now. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Joker. You try to see the lighter sides of things or where you see her. Yes. <laughs> that's not a bad idea. Then he won't technically know I've taken her off. So, we got no luck, apparently. Ha ha ha, old friend, you just. Ragnar laughs after you, whispering your suggestion. You, you know I love your sense of humor, but we haven't time for foolishness in this place. Come now, what shall we do? Are you serious? I thought I was joking. I wasn't joking. Okay. Um. Send her on her way. <laughs> you know what? I'm not joking. We will find your father if he lives. However, you must look after yourself. You are free. Escape as beasts. Best you can. And make your way to the safest of Ring City. God's will. will God's willing. We will join you soon enough. You say to the red-eyed sniffling girl. With a frightened look, she gets up and walks stiffly away. You stop her and give her a candle. Which will hopefully give her enough light to see without start. Without serving as a lighthouse beacon to the other the Nanzel the Nanzens Danzens? I don't know. Of the castle. I don't I don't know that word. Never heard that word in my life. Are you sure I am not confident she will survive? Ragnar whistles to you. Are you sure I am not confident she will survive Ragnar whistles, whistles to you as <laughs> We seek treasure and gore. She stands even less chance than our companion. Oh my god, my person is terrible. Perhaps by going our separate ways, we will lead the Nanzel. Yeah, it does Nanzel, that's what I thought, of the castle away from her, you say. Or she will lead them away from us. Kind of fucked up, but yeah. There is that too, you answer with a weary smile. Now let us find some treasure, shall we? Ale and fast horses are expensive. <laughs> Yo, okay. The castle is quiet and dark. You walk into a wide hallway that branches into two directions. One direction is covered in a thick layer of dust, while the other is covered in footprints. You decide that it would be wise to get a layer of the land before looking for any trouble. Despite the faint smell of rotting fresh from the dusty hall, 
You decide that it would be wise to go this way first. Less monsters, more treasure, or at least you hope. You have kept your lantern hooded, lantern hooded, only allowing silvers, silvers of light out. After all, you want to remain stealthy. The way is dim, however, however, and you find yourself tripping over rubble and odd pieces of furniture. Ahead, there is a stench of rot, making you wonder if there might be something terrible hiding in the shadows. Too bad you can't see in the dark like a goblin. What do you do? Maybe it's a zombie. I mean, I don't think anything's not impossible. <laughs> vacant spot of the castle. You expect your light will not shine. Okay. Since you appear to be entering a vacant part of the castle, you expect your light will not attract enemy attention. And so you unhood your lantern to see your way clearly. As you move along, the cobbler's thicker, thicken, and thicken. Thicken and thicken. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, I was so glad I pulled it out. Spiders! Ragnar yelps. He points his swords up at the ceiling. There is an enormous hairy spider spun. Suspended by a mass of yawn thick webs. The webs are dotted with small silky cans you suspect might rats or other small prey. With trembling finger, Rhino shines his swords and unslings his bow. He takes in a big breath as he fits an arrow, draws back this string and fires. The spider flings his for a moment and then drops out of the web onto the floor with a thud. The two of you move on, taking extra care to watch the ceiling. You don't say. Yup, see, I was kind of right to do that, because we would have just kept walking, the spider probably would have grabbed us. Eventually, the two of you make your way to spiraling staircases going up. The upper region of, of four places like this are safer than the lower floor, says Ragnar. Why in Neville's tongue would that be, you say? Ragnar shrugs. Do not ask me what is in the mind of fiends and evil hatred beasts. Perhaps they prefer the darkness and stag stagnant air below ground you look up the stairway and sigh well perhaps we can get a better view of the courthouse and the goblins from up here Ragnar leads the way upstairs which leads into the small tower moonlight there is in through two windows this room is finely furnished and otherwise otherwise much more nicely kept than the rest of the castle you visited so far there is a small bed still made on one side and or an orant table and a bookshelf yeah, if anyone wants to tell you what that is, I really want to know what an orange table is. Or I'll probably just look it up after this video. Um, on the table is an open fairy tale book and a god embossed hand mirror. Okay, I think I know what an embossed is. That's usually where it's covered up and there's only a mirror and it's just, it's literally just a small mirror with gold and stuff on it. Uh, my mother actually has a silver one. Scene loop. You forget about the windows and the potential view of the courtyard. You pick up the mirror to inspect it. Strange, says Renan. There's no dust up here. And do you feel a draft? We are in a ruin, you say. Of course there's a draft. The glass in the window is still intact, muttered Ragnar. Gazing at your reflection in the mirror, you decide to look pretty... You decide you look pretty good. Mm-hmm. Oh, thanks. Consider. You brush cobwebs from the weary... Oh, my God. Why are we doing this? Brown hair. You smile. You're happy to see that your teeth are looking particularly good, of course. You deserve nice tea, since unlike most people you know. Okay, my heart's starting to race. I'm about to die. Unlike most people, you, you take care of them. Every morning you wipe your teeth with a cloth dipped in a cleaning con concoction consisted, consisting of vinegar, salt, a little sand, and a small measure of your own. Your Then how? I Okay. You are about to pull yourself away from the mirror and put it back in your backpack when you glimpse a trinket skull with with thin, wispy hair just behind you in the reflection. Turn around and see not a skull, but a young girl floating a few feet in the air. Okay, look, guys. I told you we were going to die. <laughs> feet in the air. Her pale face fixes on you. Ragnar sees her, too, as evidenced by running away down the stairway. <laughs> How dare you touch that is mine. How dare you touch that what is mine. The ghostly girl shouts. <laughs> you back up and reflectively put the mirror back. Oh no, I would have pointed the mirror right at her because ghosts do not like mirrors. 
You've heard tales of powerful ghosts that can suck the life right out of the wonder if the girl, if this girl is one of those. Look at her. What do you do? I'm apologize. I'm sorry. Man, manners matter. Your mother taught you well. I, I apologize, my lady, you say. It is only that this is such a fine mirror and I wish to admire it. She glares at you for a moment, uh, then the Hannah's hard expression on her translucent face softens. I am the Duchess and Vernus. My father, the Duke, gave me that as a gift. You have heard of stories of the Duke and Vernus. And Vernus? I don't know. And the mysterious circumstances around the demise of his house. Despite your fear, you feel a Paying a sadness for his daughter, who now shimmers before you, trapped in this world. And these books, why they look exactly are uh, stories in her, here. Look like excellent uh, stories in here, you stimmer. Read that one to me, the girl commands. Of course, my lady, you answer. Luckily for you, as a wizard, you know how to read. Well, ooh, he just burned his buddy Ragnar, alright. You pick up the book of fairy tales from the dust and begin on the first page. She stops you and demands that you read her the story about the unicorn with trembling hands. You're the oh my god, I got tri <laughs> you page through the book. Eventually, you find this story and begin reading. The ghost floats up above you as though to peer down at the pictures. You feel a slight chill on your shoulder. Sometime later, you look up from her book and see Ragnar peeking around the corner of the stairway at you. You shake your head slightly at him and then return your attention to the book. I'm like, hell no, don't come here. I'm trying not to piss myself. Okay. And the story of the unicorn taps her hoof against a wall and a castle and a secret passage open up. As you read this, the little ghost girl smiles and says, there is a secret passage in the castle as well. It's a foul place, a place where people are taken never to return. Where is the secret passage you speak of, you ask? In my father's library, there is a statue. Push the arm of the statue down, she explains. You are intrigued by this and wish to ask her more, but she points at the book impatiently. And so you get back to it. Yeah, you better read that. I ain't trying to have my soul sucked out of me. Upon finishing the story, the girl demands you read her another. You wonder how long she might keep this up. Time means nothing to her, after all. You would like to get back to Ragnar. And uh, what about... Saiba's father, rescuing a merchant might even mean a fine reward. And there's Saiba herself, of course. You would like to find her before something else does. What do you do? Run for the stairs. Now, I'm going to read another story. I feel like she deserves it. She's been up here for a long time, so we're reading another story. Moral decrease! You do as the ghost says and reason another story. You do not pay attention to the, this fa the fairy tale as you are increasingly distracted by the chill just over your shoulder. When you finish the ghost demands you that another story be read. Am I so cavern that I'll continue to read to this dead girl while the living needs me? I will read no more unicorn stories tonight, you decide. What do you do? Attempt to excuse yourself. Beautiful and gracious Duchess, might I ask your full name, you ask? Gabriella, Duchess Gabriella of Inner, Vein, Inner Venus. I don't know. She answers, My lady, you bow, I beg your pardon, but there is a young woman in the castle below who requires my assistance. There are evil men, I expect they threaten her life. A mad and distress, why do you dally here then? Be gone. You need no further encouragement. You step lightly towards the door. Wait, her voice shows you. Take this, she says, and the gold tr floats out of her table over to you. I cannot see myself in it anymore, she says. So, oh, generosity befitting a duchess. I thank you most humbly. You bow low and then leave. You find Ragnar around the corner of the stairs, his sword at the ruddy. He begins asking you questions, but you put up your hand. Another time, please. I gotta take a piss. You say... Yeah, reached a good checkpoint later. I mean, it's a really good story. I mean, y'all can let me know. Um, checkpoint reached. Good job. But you, the two of you continue through the castle. Occasionally, you hear distant things, a shout, a crash, even voices. Soon, you come to a door with light steaming out through it. The, it's cracked. You open the doors even so slightly and peek in. You see a cloaked man frantically peeking back and forth, a torch in his hand. His cloak is open, revealing a 
muscular refrain inked with tattoos. You think you you think you make out at least one of the tattoos to be the symbol of Narel, god of the undead. This reminds you of a tattooed body of a man hung in the city square only a month ago. He was believed to be an evil priest of Narel. Narel? I don't know. And was accused of terrible crimes, including raising his eyes. That's what I was thinking those dead creatures were. But, oh, and that's funny about the ogre was... A, okay, so the ogre is probably under his spell. Uh, focusing on the rest of the room, your fear is quickly confirmed. There is a large stone st built into the wall. The stonework appears to be a new construction in addition. There is a luxurious curtain uh, door in the wall as well as a number of separate beds. Okay, all right, my my boy's pretty ripped. You you see the mabs? I mean, I can't zoom in on it. I tried, but priests of Nero are not fools and are able to harvest power from their deity to cast dangerous spells. However, you have the element of surprise, and there's only one of them. I'm gonna spy for a bit. Where is she? How could she escape? The man mutters to himself. The sacrifice must have appease him he whispers sacrifice think no doubt he is referring to human sacrifice now his favorite sort what my mistress he whispers teeting his head you didn't hear anyone else he must be talking to himself a moment later the priest starts walking towards the door you have creaked open quietly you move away out of sight and listen for a few seconds you're nothing not even a fussa what do you do i'm gonna wait I'm going to hold my breath and die, okay? So what are you waiting? Yep. You decide to wait a few more seconds. After all, the last time you saw him, he was heading towards this way. What a great ambush. Suddenly, the door opens and the man is there. His finger pointing towards you. There is a crack and a black bolt of energy sliced into you. Eventually, evidently, he saw you after all. Ragnar charges in. The priest ducks back as Ragnar swings his sword, but not fast enough. The blade slashes his shoulder. He tries to run, chanting something, likely a prayer to his foul god. He never finishes it. Ragnar cuts him down with one great cleave. Well, at least my boy Ragnar got me, but boy, did I just get a bolt of lightning to the heart. You want to talk about electrifying? That was shocking. All right. Now that you are in the room, you can see that you're in living quarters and a living quarters no it should be i don't know and the living court i don't know wouldn't it be the living quarters but we're not going to go into that because i can't even say things right there are several beds along the wall and a good sized chest in the corner oh my god treasure you think as you run over and try to lift the lid lock damn it oh wait i still have magic could unlock it that norarian priest did not die quietly so perhaps you should have ragnar smash the lid with his sword and then get out of here on the other hand, there ought to be a key around somewhere. Maybe you should take a few seconds to check. What do you do? I think it's only one. Break the chest. Bad. Ragnar brings his swords crashing down on top of the chest. The wood splinters, and with a few more whacks, you pry the top off. Inside is a bag full of gold pieces, a small black bond writing book, and what appears to have been some platinum engraved china. Is it Shinna? Shinna? That is now smashed. I don't know. I If I remember correctly, that's a piece of, like, China. I don't know. Maybe it's talk. I don't know. Um, That is now smashed. Leaving the broken China, you gather up your loot and hurry out of the room. The two of you have only taken a few steps into the... When you see flickering rights ahead and hear the scuffling of feet. You could run back into the room and high, press a fire bolt to cast down the hall... We're casting illusions to distract whoever is coming. What do you do? We're going back in the room, baby. Hide in that room. <laughs> Hide, you whisper to Ragnar as you run back into the room and dive behind the curtain. Me, oh, I'm behind the curtain. Ragnar presses himself against the wall behind the open door. It seems like you have been in, in your hiding place for only a few seconds when you hear hurried footsteps in the room. Valdic, he is slain. You hear a twitty voice says, Butchered, and his chest is plagued you hear another voice say that this one close this one close say this one close by you imagine whoever is glaring down at the empty treasure chest you know there are at least two men out there what do you do 
Those are terrible ideas. Well, hold on. Attack with dagger. Got got medieval on him. <laughs> the technological use was primitive in your action. Up. Uh, you know that it's. I know what that word is. It means old and like back in the. Oh my god, primitive. And your actions weren't pretty or subtle. But you can't argue with the results. That. You leap up from behind the curtain with your dagger drawn. The nearest and nearest priest gasps in surprise. You hear slay from the other priest and you dodge. But not fast enough. Painful cold radiates all out from where you are stuck by his dark magic. You jump up onto a nearby bed and launch yourself at the nearest priest. Who shrieks as you stab him over and over. Meanwhile, Ragnar has made quick work of the other one with his... Yeah, that's what I thought. Because like, if I attack, he's, gonna, he's automatically going to come out the door. You take the time to search the body and find gold, golden unholy symbols, ma medallions, on each of them. As well as one fine silver dagger. Not bad for 20 seconds of work. I tire of looting horses. Let us be off to find the merchant. And by then, a, by them, a glorious war, you exclaim. Continue. Well, look at that. I got 140 pieces of gold, got 7 life left, and 5 mana. Off you go, deeper into the castle. Soon you find yourself in a library. However, all the books are gone off the top when a shell is either stolen or destroyed. As a wizard, this is disappointing to you. Oh, castle libraries have secret doors, you announce. After searching for a little while, you notice a small statue of a wandering boy reading a book. Uh, worked into the stone wall. You press on the statue arm and it shifts down. There is a grinding sound and you see the bookshelf nearly crack open from the wall. You wedge your fingers into the gap and pry open the door immediately before you are stairs descending into the darkness. Dear reader, normally I would give you a choice of whether or not you go down the stairs, but really, who finds a secret door and chooses not to investigate? And so with like, oh yeah, that's true. No, we're not gonna go down the secret door. We're gonna go the opposite way. And so with lantern in hand, you descend a few steps and then listen. It's deadly quiet down here and chilly. You urge Ragnar to take the lead. After all, he's wearing the armor. There is a small metal lever on the inside of the passage that you suppose is what you use to open the door from the inside. Nevertheless, you decide to leave the door. What? No, I wouldn't. Screw that. It is, it is sometime... Oh, trapped in an evil smelling place. All right. It is sometime before you finally reach a small empty chamber. On the far wall is a large iron door. Uh, scrawled them? Screw lead over the door and rusty red dye. Or more likely dry blood is a set of el elaborate symbols. Gods, what is that? Says Ragnar, playing the land playing the lantern light over the symbols. It is written in the infernal tongue, you say, a language of devils, demons, and other beasts that inhabit the nightmare universe. At times, I do not envy your knowledge, says Ragnar, with a faint shudder. The study of magic leads to many dark places, you say. The trick is to not wander too far into the void. What does it say, says Ragnar, in a tone that is not at all enthusiastic or curious. So the symbol, they are crudely drawn, as though in haste, perhaps grown by blood fingers. I cannot be sure. I believe it is a word of some sort, a protection spell. A traitor spell used in such a foul language, kind of stuff. I would expect a curse or a fiendish summoning. It is protection against such a summoning, a barrier. You say, evil knows evil best, and a spellcaster of black magic understands the need to protect himself from the terror they bring into the world. Ragnar Grimace and points the tip of his sword at the door. Only a fool would go down there, although I am more a man of curiosity than wisdom. You slap his shoulder, making a dull sound against his bristly, as you have proven time and time and again. What do you do? What do you want to do? Alright, I don't know how long this has been going, but I'm going to stop it real